from the first book of Kings. When the time of David's death drew near, he gave these instructions to his son Solomon. I am going the way of all flesh. Take courage and be a man. Keep the mandate of the Lord your God, following his ways and observing his statutes, commands, ordinances, and decrees as they are written in the law of Moses, that you may succeed in whatever you do, wherever you turn, and the Lord may fulfill the promise he made on my behalf when he said, if your sons so conduct themselves that they remain faithful to me with their whole heart and with their whole soul, you shall always have someone of your line on the throne of Israel. David rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. The length of David's reign over Israel was 40 years. He reigned seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. Solomon was seated on the throne of his father David with his sovereignty firmly established. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, you are exalted over all. Lord, you are exalted over all. Blessed may you be, O Lord, God of Israel, our Father, from eternity to eternity. Lord, you are exalted over all. Yours, O Lord, are grandeur and power, majesty, splendor, and glory. Lord, you are glory. Lord, you are exalted over all. Yours, O Lord, is the sovereignty. You are exalted as head over all. Riches and honor are from you. Lord, Lord you, you are, are exalted, exalted over all. all. In your hand are power and might. It is yours to give grandeur and strength to all. Lord, Lord you, you are exalted, exalted over all. all. Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and he gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave from there. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, Leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached, every par preached repentance, and the twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> in this particular excerpt that we have from the first book of Kings, David exhorts Solomon to make sure that he will remain faithful with his whole heart and whole soul. Well, David at the end, I think it's probably fair to say, David at the end respected and loved God with his whole heart and whole soul. Not so much earlier. Not so much earlier. Just the way it is. Solomon is a flip side. He starts out loving God with his whole heart and soul, then he fades off. And that's part of the problem that is traced by the chronicler as the source of the division of the kingdom after the death of Solomon back into two, the northern and southern kingdoms. The split is a result of that. It's a, sh it's a sad thing. He couldn't hold on. He couldn't do that love of God with whole heart and whole soul. Now, it's easy to point a finger at Solomon. The trouble is, as soon as I do, I realize I also have to point a finger at me because I also don't love the Lord with my whole heart and whole soul the way I wish I did. And that's the way we are, you know? So 
That's the great gift of the sacrament of reconciliation. That's the great gift of repentance and the great gift of mercy and salvation we have in Christ. Now, turning to the gospel briefly, Jesus sends out the 12, okay, for all kinds of purposes. The word apostle comes from a Greek word, the, the uh, Latin equivalent of which gives us the word missionary, okay, being sent, being sent. And so as Pope Francis is getting ready on Ash Wednesday to send out the 1,000 missionaries of mercy throughout the world for the Jubilee of Mercy. The fact is that every missionary needs to be and is a missionary of mercy, as the apostles are here in the gospel. They're bringing mercy to people with healing. Now, I don't think too many of us are capable of doing those kinds of cures and exorcisms, but even if we can't anoint somebody with oil and cure the person, Yet we can nevertheless, because of how we live, we can still be a balm and Gilead for them. We can still be a, cons a consolation and a comfort and a strength for them. And so if we can't heal, we can at least assure people that they are loved and that, that that's one of the greatest healings that we can possibly offer somebody. So as we celebrate the Eucharist today, we may ask the Lord to help us both to be more faithful in heart and soul toward him and more willing and able to share his love with others and bring a balm of comfort to them. Let us stand and pray.